Good morning. I'm my name is Kevin Williams. I'm the manager of business development with the BBB serving Metro Atlanta, Athens, and Northeast Georgia. I want to thank you all for uh, joining us for our annual meeting and for coming into this uh, room that we've set up. Uh, we have an excellent presenter this morning. His name is David Quinlan. He's the director of marketing for the International Association of Better Business Bureau, the IABBB, our governing. Uh, agency, and he's going to uh, share some uh, information and uh, tips and advice on how to drive customer engagement, uh, you know, coming up for 2021 and this uh, new normal that we're living in. So I'm going to uh, mute everyone, and at the end, we'll have a Q&A session where you guys can ask him some questions. But uh, just wanted to give him an introduction, and uh, David, uh, you can take it away now, and if you guys, if you could please keep your cameras off, it will help with the bandwidth in the presentation uh, so everything can go smoothly. Are you, uh, David, are you ready? Yeah, Kevin, thank you All so right. much. You know, it's funny. Yeah, <laughs> we've been we've been doing remote work now since March and I still can't get the audio right. So every time I'm in these meetings, I'm always trying to click the wrong button or the speakers are going off in different directions. So anyway, Kevin, thank you so much for the introduction and good afternoon, good morning to everyone that's on this call. I'm actually calling from uh, Seattle area. I live in the uh, in, in downtown Seattle. I've been out here for about 15 years. Um, and I've been working now with the International Association of Better Business Bureau for about a year. Before that, I was working over as uh, uh, VP of Marketing for BBB Northwest and Pacific. And we had locations here in Seattle and, and in the Boise area. So anyway, I'm super excited uh, about today's topic. Um, because, you know, driving engagement to, to meet new customer demands. I mean, this is a broad topic. We can certainly devote an entire workshop um, to this particular topic. But what I think is so interesting about this and, and, and about the emerging customer and how to meet these new demands is that we are seeing a new emerging customer. And 2021 will require a lot of businesses to really reevaluate, adapt, transform at light speed, to a new way of engaging with customers and meeting customer demands. Um, so I'm gonna keep this semi-high level for, uh, for today's presentation in the interest of time. Obviously, I'd love to have a discussion at the end, answer any questions that we might have. Um, a lot of the uh, information that I'll be sharing with you today actually stems from a report that um, the International Association of BBBs had put out recently. So. Um, available for your download, or we can email you the actual full PDF report um, after the call. If you want to take a deeper dive on some of these topics, um, we can certainly do that. So bear with me here as I'm going to move the slides over. I'm going to actually take myself off of video camera because we've got two people in this house running cameras right now with our, with our respective jobs, so we're competing for bandwidth. So I'm going to turn mine off. Um, but you should see the screen here. And uh, of course, if there's any issues with audio or anything that happens, um, just let Kevin know. You can put something in the chat box and we'll we'll tackle it that way. So yeah, again, my name is David Quinlan. I'm the Director of Marketing for IABBB. I live here in the Seattle area. I'm actually from the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, and people always ask me, you know, how, how do you live in Seattle during the wintertime? Because it's always gloomy and rainy. And I said, that's not the worst part. I'm, I don't know if you're football fans out there, but as an avid San Francisco 49er fan living in enemy territory here in the Seattle area, that's worse than no sunshine and the rain. These fans are, are pretty, uh, pretty hardcore. So it makes football season tough, especially when you're the 49ers and you're not, you're not winning. Um, anyway, my hope here today, as you can kind of see on the right hand side of the screen, this is what we're going to be tackling. Um, as far as you know, how to engage with customers and, and, and dealing with new customer demands. So we'll, we'll go over each of these topics, like I said, pretty high level. Um, and then at the end, happy to dive in on any particular topic, answer any questions. And then you'll have that PDF available if you want to take a deeper dive and look at this, look at this a little bit later and um, you know, pay attention to more of, the, uh, more of the details. But my hope here really is to equip you with the resources that you need, maybe refresh some of the ideas, uh, and knowledge that you already have and inspire you uh, to step up your online game and reinforce the value of trust and really have a good discussion. So I want to start about current state. 
And some of these uh, statistics I'm gonna share with you may be surprising, you may already know it, um, but I think these are stats that um, business owners can't afford to ignore right now. You know, at BBB, we know the difficulties and the challenges and the resilience of small businesses. Our teams at BBB work with small business owners every single day. And without a doubt, small business is the backbone of this country. It fuels our economy, it creates jobs, it contributes more than 43% to our GDP. And now, you throw in COVID-19, and if running a business isn't hard enough, 2020 certainly didn't help matters for many small businesses, especially if they didn't have the reserves. Additionally, many companies struggle with technology. Uh, in fact, you know, one survey, one report shows that more than one third of small business owners reportedly believe that they do not need a website, that e-commerce is booming. At BBB.org, we saw a 36% increase year over year growth in the number of people coming to our website to research businesses. And then worldwide, e-commerce is up tremendously. 1.92 billion people purchased goods or services online in 2019 while e-retail sales surpassed 3.5 trillion US dollars. And look at this statistic. By 2040, it's estimated 95% of all purchases will be online, forcing many brick and mortar, mom and pop businesses to move their stores online and appeal to a new kind of customer. And I share these points not to paint a grim picture, but to provide business owners an opportunity to change the narrative for their company from just trying to survive to thrive in difficult times. I had a conversation uh, with this woman, Amanda Brinkman. I don't know if you've heard of her or have seen her television show. She hosts a show called Small Business Revolution. It's on, uh, it's on Netflix, it's on Hulu. Um, and BBB does a Leaders Unplugged video series. It's on our YouTube page and we interview global business leaders and authors and uh, entrepreneurs. And Amanda's the host of the show with Ty Pennington. And, and basically the premise of the show is her company Deluxe, which is a marketing company out of the Minneapolis area. It's a BBB accredited business. Uh, each year, each season, they go into small towns around uh, the United States and they contribute about $500,000 to revitalizing downtown. And, and trying to put the backbone into the, uh, you know, into small businesses to help them, help them succeed, make sure that they are set up for success. And it's, the show is actually really amazing because you can watch it and you can see all these struggles that a lot of these small business owners have from, you know, you know, understanding financial statements, from marketing, from technology, uh, obstacles, you know, how to deal with supply chain, um, increasing your value chain for a company. So, her job and her team, they go into these communities and, and they help these small businesses and they help revitalize these, these small downtowns. And I asked her, you know, as we are dealing with this pandemic and we look ahead in the future into 2021 and we know that there's going to be a vaccine at some point and we're going to get back to, you know, what we consider normal, what's it going to take right now and how is it going to change for businesses um, as, we, as we gear up for a, a reopening and how do we stay open? And I'll read this quote to you because I think it really hammers down the point that I'm trying to make for this presentation today. And, and, and she says, you know, many businesses right now um, don't put enough focus on their online presence. And that's, it, it has to happen. It's vital. It's on us as business owners to make it as easy as possible for our customers. Communicating with customers, pivoting how we sell and deliver our products, and showing the heart behind our business as to what we're doing for the community. And that's why listening and understanding our customer is a critical first step. Customers spoke loud and clear to BBB about what they liked and disliked when it comes to online retailers. In our recent business impact report, and that's the PDF that will be available for you after this, uh, after this presentation, we examined 76,000 positive customer reviews to see what resonated most with buyers. And the research ranks affordability, punctuality, friendliness, and communication as top qualities for consumers when reviewing an online business. 
Negative reviews, not surprisingly, focused on late or no deliveries primarily. But what I think is interesting here is that with more businesses vying for customers' attentions online, trust is playing a larger part in people's purchasing decisions. And we're seeing that for many small businesses. You know, finding a way to establish a foothold in the competitive market can be the biggest challenge for a small business. Giving your business a step up over the competition is always something to desire. CV accreditation is a valuable way, in my opinion, to do this, as it requires the utmost trustworthiness, customer respect, and integrity, which can help your business stand out, especially during a pandemic. And so we broke it down into six ways that you can emerge and engage and build trust uh, with customers as you head into 2021. Some of these things people are already doing. Um, a lot of businesses are already doing. The question is, can you do it better? Uh, and first and foremost, um, as you see some of these, these six steps, they look familiar if you're a BBB accredited business uh, because it aligns with our BBB standards for trust. But at the top of the list, be transparent and honest about any changes your business might be going through or how it might affect the customer experience or customer expectations. Um, communicate and educate. Communicate and educate customers about the impact the pandemic has had on your business and services. Uh, we urge business owners to be responsive to customer questions and provide any COVID-19 updates or policy changes or information on your company website or on social media. Take extra safety precautions, uh, protect your employees and customers. You wanna again, build trust by ensuring that your customers feel safe both in person and online. We urge businesses to provide affordable options if it's possible to customers. So support and build customer loyalty by offering discounts or flexible payment plans that fit budgets and restore consumer confidence. And then finally, number six there, um, or number five, I should say, adapt to customer needs by honoring requests and providing special accommodations as needed. Put the customer needs first. You heard the expression, customers are king. Um, it's, it's easier said than done. I understand that. There's cost involved. There's time and bandwidth involved. Um, but trying to seek solutions to make your customers happy and leave them happy can pay dividends in the future and really give you a return on investment. And then finally, as a BBB accredited business, promoting your accreditation assures the customers that you are a trustworthy, that you are a vetted and ethical business. And I want to highlight that last point. Because in a recent report by BBB, 35% of people exposed to an online purchase scam told BBB that they will only trust retailers who they've done business with in the past. So ensuring your customers feel safe can go a long way. Um, and that's tough to think about. If you have a, you know, a customer that was scammed by some con artist on an online purchase scam, uh, lost a lot of money, and now they don't have the confidence to go out and trust a small business, uh, because they don't have the reputation or the know-all as maybe a larger business does, um, that puts a lot of small businesses at a disadvantage. So building that trust and closing that gap, um, that's huge. That's huge, especially as we head into 2021. So that leads us into marketing your business and your brand and your reputation. And I won't go into heavy detail into every single one of these categories, again, in the interest of time, um, but the business impact report we actually do a pretty thorough breakdown in each of these areas and provide information and, and uh, suggestions on how to utilize these steps to, to make your business, uh, to market your business and, and to make your business um, trustworthy and, and you know, uh, align with what BBB is trying to do in, in building a marketplace of, of advancing trust. So no question, you know, marketing your business can be a daunting task. Where do you start? How do you have time? And, and remember that for many businesses, making a switch from brick and mortar to an online store, a lot of these businesses, they have to reinvent themselves. They have to innovate and they're gonna to have to attract new customers. So these seven steps you may wanna consider um, to help you get in front of more customers, market your business and strengthen your online reputation. And this includes being authentic, which really means sharing your passion, networking with people, exchanging best practices and sharing ideas. Uh, collecting emails, grow your Rolodex. This is a great way to capture leads, share promotions with customers, uh, send them communications, 
And, you know, if you've got any sales or if you're trying to, um, you know, build customer trust and loyalty, communicating them by email uh, could be a could be a really effective way of doing that as long as you're not emailing them 10 times a day. So maybe once a week. Great quality content. Share the how-to stories that build trust. So if you're a painter, for example, and you write a blog, or maybe it's a social media post on how to use the right primer and to avoid lap marks uh, when you paint your kitchen, people will read that content and they're gonna appreciate it. It's free content, you help them do their job, and it's really helpful and engaging um, with that customer that could potentially turn into uh, a repeat customer for you. You know, at BBB, we're big on honoring promises keeping the lines of communication open and being completely transparent with your customers. And that means responding to reviews and complaints. I find that a lot of oftentimes with, with customer reviews, people are always more apt to leaving a negative review. So choosing to answer diplomatically helps increase confidence in your brand, allows you to put your best foot forward, um, even though it seems like more people are interested in writing negative reviews and positive reviews. Um, people read the reviews regardless. So how you respond to those reviews can go a long way. Especially on social media. So like it or not, social media is changing the way we shop. If brand loyalty, customer satisfaction, and communication matter to your business, then you really should have a presence on social media. With so many companies forced to move their business online because of the pandemic, social media is often the go-to place for customers. And if you're still not convinced, I put down these four stats here, uh, 2020 stats that you might want to know about social media. Bottom line, social media can make a giant impact on business from sales and promotion to customer perception and reputation. Building a strong social media presence can really help introduce you to new customers and be more cost-effective. Um, than, than traditional advertising. And this year we saw a lot of success stories on social media um, from businesses during the pandemic. In fact, we saw some really heartwarming stories of small business owners across North America who gave their time and resources to help the community get back on the feet. Uh, and we profiled some of these stories on our on our YouTube channel and on and on social media. But you know, I remember talking to a business owner who um, it was a distillery here in Seattle that they make vodka, I believe, and uh, they stopped production and they started making hand sanitizer and uh, they distributed the hand sanitizer to the local community. Talked to the business owner, credit a business owner in Alaska that does uh, a bunch of travel um, vacation tours. And so um, travel stopped. And so what they did, they had all these empty buses. They actually used their buses to help um, deliver food to families and to vulnerable people during the pandemic that weren't able to leave their homes. So these types of stories and, and examples of giving back um, really tell a good story and talks a lot about the character of the business and the people behind the business. And so we always encourage people by volunteering, getting more involved in your area and in your community, you can strengthen your company's reputation. And then share those moments on your website and share those moments on social media. Help raise awareness for whatever, um, whatever, whatever charitable impact that you are, in, you are involved with. Uh, and then share those stories. And it provides your business with free publicity. But most importantly, it really builds trust with customers and builds trust between your brand and the community. Twenty twenty continues to test and push many small businesses across North America. Some companies have been able to thrive and succeed while others just got turned upside down. And there are some right spots and new opportunities for small business owners, especially as we head into 2021, where firms will not only reopen, but fight to stay open. A new customer, and I know I've been saying this uh, a few times during this presentation, but a new customer is emerging, one who's more aware and intentional about how they spend their money, and who gets their business. And so at BBB, our job and what we want to do is be an advocate for trustworthy and ethical businesses. That's why we exist, and that's why we're here. Now, I'd like to show you this quick video. Hopefully, you guys can hear it on your end. If you can't, just say something in the chat box, and I will send you the link.
All right, so this video, hopefully you heard it. I see it's there's something in the chat box. Maybe you didn't. Good thing it wasn't too long. Uh, we can't hear the audio. Bummer. Okay. All right. Well, don't worry. I will. Um, it's a 30 second promotional video. We're using it as a uh, commercial spot. So what I'll do is I'll give it to Kevin. Kevin can send it to all of you. Um, and it's a preview. Basically, our campaign heading into 2021 and our theme will be BBB. This is why we're here. And the uh, the central theme behind it is that we want to help businesses be better, give consumers the trust and confidence to work with BBB accredited businesses. And so that video is a uh, promotional video um, kicking off why we are here campaign. So I'm sorry that you couldn't hear it. It's probably something I I did on my end, but I will make sure that I send you all the uh, the link so you can watch it on your own. So in closing, I'd like to leave you with a quote from John Maxwell. Um, he said, where there is no hope in the future, there is no power in the present. So having the right attitude keeps you going, the wrong attitude shuts you down. Hope may get you started, but keeping your attitude right pulls you through the tough times. And I think this is so true um, for so many small businesses as we head into, uh, you know, throughout this 2020, as we wrap up 2020, and as we look toward the future of 2021, so thank you very, very much for this, um, you know, for your time, your attention, um, for the B2B accredited businesses on the call. I want to thank you for your support. Uh, without your support, our organization couldn't exist. And we can't do all the fine work in the community and, and advancing marketplace trust without all of your support. So thank you so much for, for uh, being an accredited business. And thank you so much for being part of the call today. So uh, my next action items, I will make sure that you guys get the PDF, which, again, takes a deeper dive into um, the presentation that I talked about today. It has a lot of great research, links to some resources, um, and some great information in there. And then you'll actually actually be able to see the video um, that we'll be using and promoting internationally next year as part of a, an ad campaign. Um, for that, I will now open it up to any questions. Um, you can either say a question out loud or put it in the chat box. Either one, Kevin, I'll leave that up to you on whatever you think might work best. Okay, well, our group isn't uh, terribly large, so we'll try to uh, do it uh, verbally. Um, if any, I'll just unmute everyone and um, we'll take it from there. I do wanna start with one question. Um, David, I know at the beginning of your presentation, you mentioned the uh, increased web traffic and online searches at bbb.org. Uh, as compared to last year, what were the factors that were driving that increase? Do you know? Yeah, I mean, I think the pandemic, I think with more people online and, and at home, um, I mean, online traffic, uh, site traffic is up across the board. More people are making purchases online. Um, and so with BBB.org, we make an assumption here, but a lot more people are coming onto our website to actually check out and research businesses before they make a purchase to look up businesses in the area. Um, we made an emphasis this year to create more business-facing content um, and to create a lot more articles and information to make it more applicable for businesses to actually use and um, deploy with their, own, with their own strategies and their own business models. Um, so I think it's a combination of things. We've been much more present online from an international standpoint um, than we have in years past. Um, and so that was a priority. But as we talked about, I mean, you're just going to find more customers now going to their mobile devices or going to the computer and, and looking at businesses and, and making purchases and doing their doing their shopping that way. Um, and I think even even when this pandemic uh, eventually goes away, I, I don't think these trends will go away. In fact, I think they'll start um, continuing to spike. It's convenience. It's you know, it's it's ease. Um, customers are savvy. They can go on there and they can do a lot of research and they can look up businesses, they can read reviews. Um, and so, so there's just a lot more options for consumers. They can uh, comparison shop a lot better. So that's why we really emphasize that trust because there is another component to this. When you have all these online opportunities out there, scammers realize that. And so we see a lot of online scams um, targeting customers, targeting businesses, trying to trick people into buying things. Um, giving up their identity, and, and that can be a real problem, too. So how do you navigate through all of that? And I think BBB.org is a, a really good tool, and that's what we try to push forward 
to both businesses and consumers. Okay, thank you. If anyone else yeah. has a question, you should be able to unmute yourself and uh, ask David directly. If you're a process thinker, I'm a process thinker. And so sometimes I'll take a look at this information because I know it's kind of like drinking from a fire hose. Um, and if you, <laughs> if you come up with questions later, or you read the report, or you had uh, a question about one particular topic that we went over, um, you can always email me, and uh, I'm happy to happy to respond and, and um, provide you any information that you might need. And I see Stephanie's note. Stephanie, thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. All right, Is there anyone else? Okay. Well, was this thank helpful? You. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully this was helpful. I hope I hope people learned something from this. I hope the information was good. Uh, I'm always open to feedback, Kevin. So uh, let me know if there's anything that um, you know anything that I could have done differently or any information that you all like to hear about in the future. Please tell me, and uh, we'll make sure we make that a priority, and I can get you that information, and and uh, we can always change course anytime. All right. Yes, I think it was very helpful, and I appreciate your time this morning uh, for doing this for us and for our ABs. And for the ABs who did join us, uh, I appreciate your support and continued uh, uh, efforts, you know, to help our BBB grow and to help keep up an ethical marketplace for business owners and consumers alike, which is our mission. And we couldn't do it without you guys. So thank you. And as David said, I will get the PDF uh, emailed out to the accredited businesses so you can have a more uh, detailed uh, information and deeper dive into the subject he was talking about. So if no one else has anything else, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. You have a great rest of your day and a great and successful uh, end of 2020 and we're going to 2021 uh, on a positive swing. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. See you later. All right. Thank you, David. I'm going to go ahead and record the session for the folks that weren't able to join us. So good afternoon again, and thanks again for joining us um, for the breakout session for the 2020 Financial Impact on Small Business. We're blessed to have Nicole Davis join us today to share more about the Paytech Protection Program, also known as PPP, the status of the forgiveness of it, and the employee retention credit, and maybe some new offerings that might be in store for you in 2021. Nicole is a CPA and manager for Smith & Howard, a CPA firm located right here in Atlanta. She joined Smith & Howard in January of 2012 and works in the tax services group. She's a member of both the nonprofit and real estate niche teams. She works with many of the firm's nonprofit clients, including preparing for IRS Form 990s. Nicole received a bachelor's in business administration from the University of Georgia and a master's of accountancy from Georgia State University. She's a member of the Georgia Society of Public, of Certified Public Accountants and the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. Nicole is also on the school, on the board of the new school. So I suspect she's an expert who will guide us with any questions that you may have. This session's really meant for open dialogue, so feel free to ask questions or add comments as we go. Nicole, the floor is yours. Thanks, Brandy. Um, as Brandy mentioned, I'm leading the PPP team at Smith & Howard, and what that is entailing is mostly helping clients with their forgiveness applications and forgiveness calculations. We have tracked that really closely, as well as all the other CARES Act implementations and new things that will hopefully be coming before the end of the year. Um, there are three types of forgiveness applications that we are focusing on right now, and that's your 3508S for simplified forgiveness, your 3508EZ, and your regular form 3508, and all of those are different forms that you can submit to your lender for forgiveness. And on those are different levels of complexity as to how you are substantiating your PPP expenses, how you're using them, and if you'll get your full forgiveness um, or part of your loan will turn, part of your PPP funds will turn into a loan. Um, as with kind of everything in the CARES Act, there's still some 
open and unanswered questions surrounding the PPP loan forgiveness process. And there's some new questionnaires that have recently been released regarding loans over $2 million that we're working through. But, you know, in general, we're staying very informed. We watch weekly updates um, and we've become, you know, very informed and providing guidance on the PPP applications. And as Brandy said, we're trying to make this breakout session interactive. So I'd really like to just take questions from people on their PPP process or stimulus questions or, you know, hear how people have been impacted and how they're dealing with that. So again, as um, Nicole mentioned, this is open dialogue, so feel free to unmute your mics, and if you have any questions, no crazy questions, I'll tell you, I don't know much a whole, a whole lot about this, she's the expert, but um, just go ahead and throw them out there and see if maybe she can have some really good information to help you along, so. I have a quick question. Sure. This is my, actually my first year full-time in business. I resigned my full-time job in um, December of last year. So just to do my um, business full-time this year. So I wasn't fortunate enough to um, obtain any of those loans. Um, Unfortunately, um, because we're having a real hard time hearing you. Prove I could not that um for being offered for those. Are there any other programs out there that I could qualify for? Being that this is my first time in business, because they um when I was just doing it part time, you know, it wasn't a big deal because of course I had a full time job, so that's where most of my income was coming from. But this year being full-time in business, I made um, I made more than what I made last year doing it um, part-time. So I didn't qualify for anything at all because to them, my business did better this year than it did last year. So you broke up a little bit during what you're saying. You're saying you couldn't qualify for the PPP stuff? Um, PPP. There were grants in my county, nothing. Um, I sent in income statements and everything, but because my business made more money this year than it did last year when I was doing it part-time, so I, they were saying I couldn't prove that my business was affected by the, um, by, by the pandemic. Okay. Um, for the PPP loans, it was really to anyone that had any kind of payroll and even as a self-employed individual you can still show that you know you had self-employment earnings and then you could get ppp funds that way um other grants and loans may have required you know financials from last year to this year and there's actually the ppp window for the first round of funds has been closed but we're hoping to see another round of funds towards okay. the end of the year that are going to be released with some new guidance. Um, but the PPP, the, at least in the first round that we've seen, they didn't require prior income statement to current income statement comparisons. It was more so to cover payroll costs for employers. Okay, because I do do pay, um, I do payroll, but it was denied by my bank. Pay my, I'm actually a W two employee with my company. Okay, so I'm not sure what your bank saw, um, but in general, you know, we have quite a few companies that have had decent 2020s, and you know, as compared to 2019, that were able to get it. So I don't know if it was something your banker misunderstood. Um, they didn't understand the rules, uh -huh. but in general, the PPP funds were to cover, you know, payroll for businesses, and that includes self-employed 
businesses as well. Because on the application, it did state rent as well, and I do rent a space, but it was denied. I don't know. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, but hopefully, in the second round, you know, if you're unable to get through with your regular banker, maybe try reaching out to someone else um, that can help you push through the application because 2019 versus 2020 earnings weren't as important um, as they are for other loans. There is, there are other options. There's, you know, the Main Street Lending Program and those are loans, they aren't forgivable, but they're low interest rate loans. There is mm -hmm. the, you know, you can do the employer payroll tax deferral, defer your employer portion of payroll taxes to, 2021 and 2022. So there's some options there. And um, there are economic injury disaster loans as well. And those are available to sole proprietors. Yeah. Even those, I didn't really qualify because um, they were going by your gross income in 20, um, 2019. So it wasn't anything much. Um, because I was only doing it part time then. Right. Yeah. So they were they were basing the payroll off of 2019. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But maybe with the new, um, you know, it's possible with this new round of PPP since most of 2020 is over. They'll hopefully they'll consider 2020 income as well. Yeah. But we don't have guidance on that yet. Mm hmm. Okay. Thank you, Nicole. That's it for me. Sure thing. Thanks for reaching out. You're welcome. Nicole, was there any other information you could share about maybe um, the employee retention credit or other offerings that might be in store for them in 2021? Sure. The employee retention credit, it's currently available. They haven't extended it past January 1st yet, but it's a $5,000 per employee credit that employers can take on their 941s. Um, and you can actually get a prepayment of that if you've got more wages than credit. So there are ways to get that prepaid. Um, the only thing between the employer retention credit and the PPP is that you can't use both at the same time. So you can't pay wages with the PPP loan and get then get a credit for those wages because the loan is most likely going to be forgiven. So people need to watch out on using both of those. But that is another really good opportunity that was presented by the CARES Act for employers. And that's for any employers. There's no size limit or anything like that, as opposed to the PPP loan. It's generally only for employers with employees 500 or less. Well, I can see how all of this can be very confusing to any business owner. So we're so grateful that we've got somebody as knowledgeable as you that we can reach out to and work with. Um, and for those that have joined us today, if there's anything that comes up in the future that you can think of where maybe BBB can help put you in touch with somebody that can give you those answers, please feel free to reach out to us. That's why we're here. Um, you know, we've got a whole plethora of accredited businesses in a number of industries. We know who can help you. So. Feel free to let us know if you have any other questions. Um, Nicole, is there anything else that you want to share with the team? I don't think so. Thank you for your time. All right. All right. Anybody else have any other questions or comments? Well, again, we appreciate you joining us and for attending the annual meeting, and most importantly, for your commitment to BBB Standards for Trust. We hope you have a fantastic afternoon, and we'll talk with you again soon. Thanks, guys. Before getting started, you're going to go to bbb.org, and then once you're there, you're going to click on Business Login at the top of the page. From there, you're going to click on Don't Have an Account Yet. You'll be able to create an account with your name, email address, and a password that you're going to set. You'll receive an email as confirmation, click on the link, and then you'll be able to log in. You'll notice on this page that there are two tabs at the top of the page. 
One is for your personal account and the other is for your company. For your personal account, it's going to have all of your interactions with any businesses on the BBB website as a consumer. You'll be able to view your reviews, complaints, request to quotes, as well as edit your personal profile. Here you'll be able to add additional businesses as long as they are within our system. Once you've added them, they'll be added as an additional tab up here. On this screen, you'll be able to see how long you've been accredited, how much of your profile is complete, your interactions with your consumers, and you'll be able to update your profile. So here you see um, all the things that need to be added. So there's no operating hours, no business description, those types of things. Okay, so what does that mean? If I click on it, it's going to take me to the spot that I need to upload photos, logos, and photos. Um, and we'll cover this in just a second a little bit uh, in more in detail. But this just allows you to add your company logo and extra photos to give um, consumers ideas of you know, the type of work you do. This is not to be anything commercializing your company. It's more about the work your employees are doing and things like that. So going back to the overview, um, you can manage, if you have any complaints, you can manage them from here. Uh, you can update your profile and you can manage reviews and things like that. You can read up on uh, about Indeed here also. The next tab that you're gonna wanna really know about is your accreditation tab. Here's where you can make a payment. You can update your profile from here. And underneath, you'll see more tabs. You can go to your billing history, make a payment, update your payment methods. So make a payment, it would be a little bit of a different area. This is just, I have a new card, I want to update it. Stats is a good one to look at. So you can look at your stats, see how things are going over the last few months, over the last year. Um, and then some other things that you have to look at if you would like to do that. Another really good tool is the accreditation tool. Okay, so under the accreditation tools, you'll see BBB logos. If you click there, this is gonna take you where you can download your logos. You wanna get web. Sorry, oh, I have to agree first. You have, if you're clicking on web, and it's not doing anything, you have to agree to the terms. It's just saying that you, you have read the above and you're agreeing to use the logo as, as instructed. And it gives you several options here. And I won't go over those in detail. You can just look at those and it has all kinds of different options, whether you want it vertical, horizontal, uh, whether you want it for your email signature, um, for your customer review. So if you want a customer review logo, there's uh, an option for that. Uh, say, for instance, I want a logo that I can print. I would just go to print area and I can download those and print those on any, you know, any uh, contracts and things I may have. Um, there's also the customer review area that I can print. There's some postcards. There's point of sale cards and uh, different things here that you can download. Download and print. So that eliminates you having to pay for anything that, um, you know, even stickers, you can download uh, these as stickers onto labels so that you can go ahead and use those. Does anyone have any questions about logos or anything I've already discussed? Yes, I do. Okay, okay go ahead. Um, Okay, I had a couple of questions on the part where you said logos um, and the photos. You said that should be more about the work that we're doing as a company or our employees or what did you say about that again? I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. So instead of it being a commercial, sometimes, you know, you might have a, a commercialized uh, video or or pictures. It's better to have pictures of your your employees working. So say, for instance, if you're a cleaning company, and you can show pictures of before and after, or maybe your employee, you know, cleaning something. It just kind of gives the uh, business, or excuse me, the consumers ideas of, you know, what type of business you are and, and what kind of cleaning you do and stuff like that. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, like more about show pictures of us doing the actual services. Yes, that is correct. Yes, okay. And on your part where you said the make a payment um, tab, yeah. or are those in reference to our payments that we make to B B and B, or are those in reference to payments that we would receive from customers? Yes, those are payments that you would make to BBB for your accreditation. Okay. But there is there is a part in here I'll get to in just a second that actually you can update the payments that you take from your consumers, uh, what types of payments that you are accepting. Gotcha. So I'll show that to you okay. in just Thank a you. minute. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. So uh, looking back here at accreditation tool, the other neat thing is those decals that you can order to go on your, your vehicle or on your window front. Uh, sometimes people even use the window front for their vehicle because you can put it inside the window uh, to make it look really nice um, if you're not wanting a sticker on your vehicle or maybe you have a smaller vehicle and you don't, you don't want the big one on a smaller vehicle. We also have magnets. If you don't want a sticker on your vehicle, we, we have magnets that you can order for two for 20. Um, but the decals that are, uh, the vehicle decals and the window decals are free. They are your complimentary. Um, we ask that you uh, ask for one, you know, the amount of vehicles that you have and the amount of windows that you would need for. Um, and then if you want to purchase stickers for contracts and things, we, we do, if you're not wanting to print those yourself, uh, we do have those available um, to, to buy for $35 for $500. And we also have this lovely plaque bit. We have a lot of people that love that plaque. So that is something that you can choose to purchase. All right. Um, another wonderful thing is that we used to mail these, but now it's right at your disposal. You can print your certificate. And it's going to, mine's going to look a little bit different because this is a sample company. Um, sometimes it comes out right, sometimes it doesn't. So yours would say valid through and it would give you the date of when it was valid through. So it would probably say 2021 now um, on your certificate, unless you're not paid through 2021. If you're still paying through 2020, it's not going to show until you've, you've started paying through 2021. Um, so you just download it and print it, and you can put it in a frame or whatever you like to do with it. You can take it to Expos and display it uh, there or uh, whatever you decide to do with it. It's up to you. Then we get to go to Company Profile. This is another wonderful uh, tool that you can use to update your company's information. Say, for instance, you want to um, edit some of the information, maybe the address and things are not correct, or Maybe you have some employees that are no longer with you that you don't want, you know, to be listed as VP or, or what have you. So you go to edit. And then you would just start filling out the information. Oh, like a pike. <laughs> and your company name, you know, is probably going to stay the same. If, it, if it's different, if you have a DBA you would like to list, um, you could just click on add another name. Here's where you could change your address. But if none of that needs to be changed, you would just leave it as is. And then you can come here and just list everybody that you need to be listed. If that needs to change. And then here is, you know, your type of business if you need to add another type of business. It does have to be um, relative to the type of business you already have listed. So it's going to throw up a red flag if I say I'm an online retailer, but now I'm a plumber. So that seems to be a different type of business. So just make sure that it is uh, coinciding with what business you already have. Um, so service type, we're going to get to that in a different area. Uh, because you can add more information than what you see here for that. Um, it's a little easier. So um, we're just going to click on submit. And so you may go back in here later in the day and notice that everything's still the same. That's because it has to go through an approval process and it takes 24 to 48 hours for that to um, update. If you need it immediately updated, you're just like, I can't wait that 24 to 48 hours, you can call our accredited, our accredited business hotline. 
um, through those emails that we send out uh, that has our phone number on there. Um, you can call that number. Uh, it is 404-559-1555. And uh, just let us know that you really need that to be updated immediately. Um, but normally it is between 24 and 48 hours. It's usually about 24 hours or less that we get that updated. Uh, the next thing we talked about earlier was logos and photos. This is where you can load 20 videos or 20 photos. Now your logo will be considered part of those 20 photos. So uh, just want to make sure that you do, um, you know, have 19 photos after your logo. There is a spot that once you update, once you uh, upload a photo, it will ask you if you want to make it a logo, but uh, and you just a business logo, and you just say yes on that area. Same thing with videos. You just select your files and upload those. And I'm sorry. I am mistaken on the videos. There's three videos, not 20 videos. Products and services is a good spot to put what type of uh, description that, you know, what kind of services you offer and, or products that you offer. Um, you just want to put all that, that in there, your refund and exchange policy there. Um, then we get to service area. And this is really nice. We just want to make sure that we are saying where we service. If you're nationwide, because maybe you're a retailer and you're, you're online most, mostly and you want to put nationwide, you can do that. Um, if you want to, you know, I just service Atlanta Metro. Uh, but if you want to be more specific, you want to go into Georgia and click on Georgia. And now you can choose those counties that you're in that you want to um, service. Okay, and it's going to list those down there. Again, this is something that does have to go through an approval process. So if you don't see it right away, that would be why. Hours of operation. This is where you can list your hours of operation. Oop, I meant to say PM. And I want to apply this to all, but maybe one of those days I'm closed. Let's say I'm closed on Monday. It'll then take that off. So you can apply that maybe on one day, I am by appointment only. So it'll give the time, but it will say appointment only. And then it'll say closed on Monday. And if you want to reset those changes, you can do that. Then we go to accepted payments. This is where you can let consumers know what type of payments that you accept. And you can choose as many of those as you would like. And you can just keep going. All right, update your company is where I took you earlier, where you can update through that um, questionnaire that I showed you earlier. And I think it's just going to take you back to that same spot. Yes. View BBB profile. And I've got a blocker. If you see it was trying to take me to your uh, what your BBB profile looks like, um, that does work. It's just um, some block, something was blocking my computer from doing that. And then we have customer interactions. Customer interactions is a really good tool. Um, this is, of course, I have none because I'm a sample company. Uh, but this is where you can view for the last three months any complaints or reviews that you've received. And you can go in those and uh, select it. You can answer it from here. Um, you can read them and answer them. Uh, get a quote. This is where maybe you've received some uh, quotes and it'll show the ones you've claimed. Well, what if you've missed some? So we just wanna make sure you don't miss those. And it is telling you here how you can increase your quotes. So what you can do is make sure that you have those um, emails and phone numbers listed that you want to get those quotes uh, sent to. Does anybody have any questions about this or anything previous that I've mentioned? I did want to add something, Crystal. Okay, go ahead. Uh, for anytime you're adding a logo, um, you might already know this, but the PNG files um, typically have a transparent background. So 
when they're uploaded into our system, sometimes it will have like a, back, a black background and it won't be as clear. So if you have a JPEG or JPG file or JPEG file that you can upload, that's your logo, that would be great because typically it will have a white background and it will show really nicely as your business um, logo. So I just wanted to give that uh, little tidbit. And also you want to check the dimensions. I believe we give like a suggested dimension for your uh, for your images. Um, sometimes if the image is too uh, large, it'll try to shrink the image and then it'll become a little skewed. So maybe if you have someone or yourself who can kind of alter the image so that it will be in the dimensions that we suggest, that will be the best for uploading. That's all. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Julie on that? Okay. So basically I've gone over everything. You can check out these other uh, little areas, programs and services that we offer. Um, minority owned uh, button. Uh, it is something that we use to offer programs. Uh, so if that applies to you, you can make sure uh, this right here is just telling you how to get there. Um, so if you want to use that, uh, that That'll show you that, that instructional video, COVID-19 resources if you need that, and just how-to videos uh, that we put on YouTube to help you navigate with your account page. Any questions? We are at the uh, time that we're through, but hey, we're open for any questions you may have. I'm gonna put myself back on video. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. I was just going to ask about the minority owned button. I didn't recognize that. Is that new? And are you saying when we go there, it'll give us more information or what is that? Yes, ma'am. So if we have any programs or information that we are able to share with you, um, then we will select uh, those companies that have selected that, uh, you know, going and selecting that button. Uh, if you selected that, then that lets us know that you want more information. Right now, it's not public. Uh, we're hoping that will be something in the future that we're able to offer um, so that when uh, consumers are going to find a business and they want to use, say, a woman-owned business, they can, um, you know, search for that easily through our system. But right now, that is not available, but we are offering, you know, we might get information that we're able to offer you or programs That's awesome. that, that can okay. work. Yes. Great. Yes. Thanks. So if you haven't done that already, you're welcome. If you haven't done that already, go ahead and do that so we can have you on the list. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? All right, you guys, this has been awesome. I've enjoyed the day. I hope you guys have too. I hope you're uh, going to walk away with uh, more information than you came with. And if you have any questions, again, uh, just contact us at the accredited business email, accredited business at atlanta.bbb.org, <laughs> or just look for one of the emails we send you, and also that phone number I gave you earlier. All right? You guys have a wonderful it's been afternoon. Awesome to see you, Julie, to put a face to all those emails. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Great information, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Bye -bye. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you.